This NVIDIA GPU has its roots on the gaming side. However, it is going to absolutely make someone a billionaire one day. Okay, now definitely not one of these GPUs, but many of these GPUs working together are 100% gonna make someone a billionaire. And I'm gonna show you in this video why that is. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. And today we're gonna take a look at the NVIDIA L40S. Well, we're not just gonna take a look at one NVIDIA L40S, we're actually gonna take a look at eight of them running in a super micro system. We also have eight NVIDIA H100 GPUs. So you're gonna see that we have well over $300,000 of GPUs here. And I'm gonna explain how in deploying this whole L40S thing is going to make someone over a billion dollars one day. In fact, I've already seen folks that probably should be spending money on this rather than the H100. And before we get too far, I just wanna say thank you to Supermicro and NVIDIA for making this video possible. I really wanted to do this one for a while, ever since I saw the L40S announcement. And since it was over a third of a million dollars worth of hardware, I traveled to the GPUs rather than having the GPUs travel to me. But with that, I wanna talk today about the NVIDIA A100, the L40S, and the H100. A lot of folks don't know the differences between these GPUs, what's the difference between the PCIe and also the SXM5 GPUs, and where you really use both. And something I didn't know before we we started this is that if you're going to deploy something like under and NVIDIA told me this 10,000 GPUs, then you should be using the L40S instead of the H100 for inferencing. That's right, up to 10,000 GPUs. Okay, let's start on the SXM side because I think that's one that a lot of folks will want to see. So first off, the SXM module is a custom module that's really NVIDIA specific. No other vendor that I know of uses the SXM module. Most of the other vendors will use OAM modules instead of SXM5 because that's more of the open standard that a lot of the cloud providers put forward to kind of push back against SXM5. But in the world of NVIDIA, SXM5 rules the roost right now. And we've been looking at SXM series GPUs for generations, all the way back to the Tesla P100 back when there was a Tesla in the branding, we had an eight-way P100 system. Now, one of the huge things that you get with the SXM modules for the NVIDIA H100 and A100 and all that kind of stuff is that you get in VLink. And specifically in the DGX or HGX H100 systems, you're going to see that there are NV switches on board and these NV switches are what allow you to do GPU to GPU communication really quickly. We've been reviewing these systems for years. The P100 generation really didn't have that. They just had in VLink in a kind of non-switch topology, but by the time we got to the V100 series, we started seeing NV switches. Nowadays, that's base for the architecture. Now in early 2022, I traveled to NVIDIA and I actually got hands-on with one of the first SXM5 NVIDIA H100 GPUs. You can see that photo here. But it really wasn't until late 2022, early 2023, until systems started showing up. And one of the big reasons for that is the fact that PCIe Gen 5 CPUs took a little bit longer to hit the market than everybody thought because of a late bug in Intel processors. And as a result of the Intel respin, NVIDIA didn't have a PCIe Gen 5 capable host until those processors were about ready to launch. Now, the world of SXM allows you to do a couple things. Like one, you get that NVLink and NV switch, so you get the fast GPU to GPU communication. The other huge one, however, is the fact that you get a higher power limit because you're able to go push more power into a SXM custom module than you can into a PCIe IE module. So with SXM5, the other thing you get is a higher power budget. So no longer do you have to worry about like under 700 watts or something like that for a GPU. You can go well beyond that. And that allows NVIDIA to do two things. One, they're able to enable a little bit more on the compute resources side versus the PCIe version. And the other thing they're able to do is crank up the frequency, even, you know, feeding a little bit more voltage. And that is what gives it the higher performance because it's able to hold higher clocks for longer. Now, while the eight-way HGX H100 systems are absolutely phenomenal, there are some challenges. And one of the big ones is just frankly the power consumption. When we've tested these things before, if you're not using a liquid cooled one, for example, you can easily go over eight kilowatts of power in a single system. And they do have a little bit of headroom if you had to go a little bit higher than that, maybe in the future. And so if we're being real here, a lot of the HGX H100 systems that have eight GPUs and that are, you know, these high power systems, they're in these racks where maybe you get like one, maybe two systems in a rack. And, you know, that's just a big challenge. And that's why a lot of folks are looking at things like liquid cooled to increase density. And there's just a lot of challenges with that form factor. So the other side to it is that there's always a PCIe version. And because of those power challenges, NVIDIA has supported PCIe GPUs for absolutely years, guys. I mean, we were doing pieces back in like 2017 or something like that, sticking a whole bunch of 1080 Ti's. If you were around and doing AI back then, you remember these like deep learning builds that we did where we had, you know, like 10 or eight NVIDIA GTX 
I think 1080 Ti's. And these PCIe systems were like the go-to solution back in the day. Now, some licensing changes happen and all that kind of stuff, but the idea of having these PCIe GPUs and using nickel to go and push work out to the different PCIe GPUs in a system is something that is well understood and people have been doing it for more than half a decade. And so fast forward to 2023 and Nvidia realizes it has a huge challenge. It cannot make enough H100s to satisfy demand. And that takes us to the topic of today's video, which is the L. 40s. Now you might remember the Nvidia L40 as a professional GPU that was really kind of like a data center version of like a like a workstation, like professional graphics visualization GPU, all that kind of stuff. And then Nvidia looked at that and they said, "Hey, uh, we can do something cool with it." So the L in the L40 is the Ada Lovelace architecture. So if you have something like I don't know an RTX 4090 or something like that, or if you have an RTX 6000 Ada edition, those are still using the same architecture. So what Nvidia did was they took their big die for Ada Lovelace. They took that big GPU die. They have their 48 gigabytes of memory and they can do ECC on that. However, this is GDDR6 memory instead of the HBM memory that's on like the H100 part. So it's not as fast a memory and that's a big deal. But the other thing they did was they increased the TDP on the L40S by 50 watts over the L40 and they used more power for things like the AI performance rather than doing the visualization side. And so shifting that power around meant that there are some big changes in what you get. And so when we look at the chart, you're gonna see the big trade-offs that you make. So first off, the L40S has RT cores because it was from that line of cards that Nvidia was using for visualization. So we do have the ray tracing cores in there. And so we do have performance numbers for that. Now, the one thing that you don't get though, is you don't get FP64. So if you wanna do like double precision, like you wanna go do a supercomputer and you wanna do like those like super technical calculations that need double precision, like this is the wrong architecture for you. Now, when you look at this table comparing the A100 versus the L40S, you're going to notice that a lot of these numbers you know, look a lot better for the L40S once you get past that double precision line. But there's one that is super important here, and that is FP8. FP8 is a numerical format that NVIDIA has been using more and more in their GPUs, and it's one of the secret sauces of the H100 is something called the Transformer Engine that manages how you do the exponent mantissa on the FP8 like numerical format. We're not going to get into that here. But the L40S actually supports the Transformer engine. And that is one of the big things that you get with the L40S that makes it a really interesting AI inference GPU. Now, when we compare that to the 80 gig H100 PCIe model, of course, you know, you're, you're gonna see faster performance on the H100, but that's only part of the story. The reason for that is that the H100, just if you just look up pricing online, you're gonna see that even the PCIe version sells for around 32 plus thousand dollars at this point. So while these H100s are $32,000 a pop, and there are eight of these in the system, the L40Ss, they're only around $12,000 each. So at some point, the fact that the L40S is cheaper doesn't really matter unless it's you know price competitive on the performance side with the H100. And when you look at some of the performance numbers, it actually is, it's actually pretty darn close. And so what we did was we ran like Llama 7B and we just kind of did inferencing based on that. And what we saw was that, yeah, you do get more performance with the H100, but you don't get so much more performance that it overcomes the price side. And so what you're gonna just generally see when you look at the L40S versus the H100 is that you're gonna see that the H100 is somewhere between two and maybe 2.7 times as fast. However, it's also at least 2.6 times the price. And on a lot of deals, that 2.6X is extremely conservative at this point. There's such a long lead time for the H100s that people are actually paying multiples of MSRP in some cases to be able to get GPUs quicker than having to wait six plus months for them. The L40S on the other hand, you can get in systems in a couple weeks. And so just to show you what this looks like, we set up systems with eight GPUs of both the H100 as well as the L40S in the Supermicro Sys 521 GETNRT. Now this is a type of Supermicro server that we've seen for years, but they actually added another U, making it a 5U system, which aids in the cooling of these higher power GPUs. There have been weird things that they've done and other vendors have done for years. An example of that back in the day was the humping trend where GPU servers used to have little humps in them to be able to fit the power connectors of GTX cards. 
And when you put these systems together, you're gonna see that the power of these systems is much lower than an HGX H100 eight-way system. So instead of topping like eight kilowatts or something like that, you're gonna see that we have about 2.8 kilowatts worth of GPUs in there. Plus you have cooling, other components and all that kind of stuff. So you're gonna see that these systems often run well under four kilowatts. So they use less than half the power. And there are definitely some other considerations that you get with the L40S that you don't get with the H100 and vice versa. Like for example, you get V GPU support. So that's one thing that you definitely get. And NVIDIA is really kind of pushing away from like their high-end AI GPUs doing like vGPUs for like virtualization because it just doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. But on the other hand, the H100 has MIG, which is the many instance GPU, which is really used for like cloud providers so they can divvy up an entire H100 into multiple parts and sell them to customers if they need to. There are other differences, of course, like the AV1 encode decode, as well as the number of RT cores and all that kind of stuff that you get. So there are definitely some differences between the two solutions. So that brings me to how someone is gonna become a billionaire off of this? And the answer is really easy. Over the last three to six months, I've been inundated with a whole bunch of VC pitch decks and all kinds of stuff like that, where people are looking at you know, these companies that are able to raise a lot of capital from you know, either VCs, private equity, or wherever. And you know, a lot of them did mining or something like that back in the day, and they have cheap sources of power. So the idea is like, hey, what if we go build AI clusters around these cheap sources of power? And you know, then they're, we're good. And the reason for that is is because AI training tends to be a really latency tolerant application so long as everything you need, like all the data and all that kind of stuff is on a very fast network. So the idea is like, sling some fiber out to these, you know, remote areas that have cheap power because there's like a decommissioned mill or, you know, there's a, a hydroelectric plant that has extra power. Like guys, there are a whole bunch of different ways that people are doing this, but these guys are spending hundreds of millions of dollars on GPs to go do that. And in their pitch decks, a lot of them are paying over that 30 something thousand, $40,000 per H100 GPU because they're trying to jump ahead of the line and tell investors like, we can go get our H100s faster than everybody else, but they're paying like out the nose for them. So one of these days, one of these companies is gonna realize that they can deploy L40S systems in quantities of, you know, up to like 10,000 GPUs near these cheap sources of power and use them for things like AI inference, but also, and importantly, being able to retrain or customize models that have already been trained, like big foundational models, being able to customize those models on a infrastructure based on L40S machines. Now doing infrastructure using PCIe GPUs is super popular and there are other use cases for the L40S, but I just wanna highlight this one because you know, we had the ability to use eight-way L40S and eight-way H100 systems. And frankly for us, it reminds us of like six plus years ago when we were creating these systems with like GeForce GPUs back when that was like the thing to do. The difference though, of course, is that the L40S is a supported and sanctioned architecture. So you get things like the ability to use nickel and FP8 transformer engine and all that kind of stuff. You get that ability using the officially sanctioned GPUs, which is why folks use these instead of other options on the market. So guys, I hope you like this look, like the A100, H100, and L40S GPUs and these giant super micro systems. And if you do wanna see more about these AI servers, definitely check out the STH main site. We have lots of articles we can link in the description. And hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.